There is so much going on in the background, but... <sighs> hey. <laughs> I don't know how to begin this video, so I'm just gonna start talking. Oh my god. I have like too much to say, but at the same time, not a lot. I want to assume that most of you who are watching this are people who have either been subscribed to me for a few years and forgot you were subscribed to me because it's been three years since I've uploaded and you're like, oh, what's this bitch up to? Or you're someone who watched my video about me moving into my super teeny tiny downtown Los Angeles apartment and you're curious to see what's going on now. And as you can see, uh, part of what's going on now is that I do not live there anymore. Um, multiple reasons, which we'll get into. Um, but it has been over three years since I've uploaded a video. It is technically the like pandemic anniversary because it's March 11th. And I think that was when the World Health Organization decided, yeah, this is no good. Welcome to pandemic, pandemic times, baby. I'm nervous to make this video, I think. And it's not because I'm struggling to find the words, although it looks like I'm struggling to find the words, but just so much has happened so um and it you know what and it all comes down to this sock right here my favorite for my favorite pair of socks which i used to wear with these pants all the time but i can no longer do that and i'll explain why so after that video came up and by the way i do want to actually open it and um read some of my favorite comments because they're so fucking funny people were so mad and so mean and it was i am one of the very few people because of how long i've existed on the internet and in public spaces such as youtube and stuff um public internet spaces i mean and so i you can't tell me shit that'll hurt my feelings there is no nothing that anyone even if you watch this video or you just stop watching here and decide, let me try to hurt her feelings, it's not gonna work. It's absolutely not gonna work. I have been called everything under the sun. I have been baited every which way. There's nothing that you can do. But I love, I find so much humor in when people try to take me down a peg or 12. <laughs> Someone said, I sense a high case of anxiety, mania, and fear. Hope you get better. Oh yeah, someone said this beginning is like the Blair Witch Project. Someone said, I would rather see the communal bathroom instead of every single item you own. Honestly, good point. <laughs> but yeah, and then it's just a lot of people being like, that's not an apartment, that's a room. You're not wrong, but it's also an apartment because I had to sign a lease for what I got. So I called it an apartment, fucking, fucking forgive me. So let me go ahead and summarize my 2020 for you really quickly. Hopefully it goes quick, but fucking a lot of shit happened. So back when I was still living in that apartment, 2020, before the pandemic, I upload this video, let's move from that point there. So. During the recording of this video, actually, I was losing my mind because I had slowly started losing articles of clothing because the laundry machines in that old apartment were just like these couple communal machines, two washers, two dryers out in the hallway. And it was a very small complex um, to the point where there was like 30 units, all very like one room bachelor apartment type things with the communal bathrooms, the showers and stuff like that which I never took photos of. Um, so fucking forgive me, you'll never see that now. And um, so the laundry situation started really getting me annoyed because I thought I was losing my mind because suddenly I'm missing key pieces of my wardrobe. Eventually I, I realized, oh, I'm not just missing key pieces of my wardrobe, I'm missing bras and underwear and small little accessory type things like that, which takes us back to the sock. I lost the other part of the sock during this adventure. So I, at this point, I'm like, great. Not only am I just losing my clothes, I'm not even losing them, they're getting stolen. So that's annoying. I was like, great, there's a creep who's just going in to the washer and dryer, stealing my unmentionables, which I'm mentioning now publicly. And I was just so irritated. And time is passing. I eventually go on a trip back home for Valentine's Day as to surprise my family and friends. Just be like, Teehee, look at me visiting back. I'm a working girl. I'm settled in LA now. Isn't this so exciting? So that happens. When I come back from LA, I am so beat. I'm winded. I'm feeling a little under the weather. And again, this is like mid to late February at this point, 2020. And I am awoken late that night uh, by a man standing over me in my bed. We'll hold. We'll hold for you to take that little piece of information in. Um, back then, boy, did I not hold. I erupted in a scream that I'm sure awoke every 
horror movie casting agent in the Los Angeles metropolitan area because boy oh boy, even though I'd had that vocal cord surgery the September prior, I still got it baby, <laughs> I still fucking got it. And I've spoken about it very publicly on Instagram. I'm very open about what I refer to now as my stalker because it turned out I had had a man that had been stealing my underwear and socks and bras, um, but he wasn't doing it from the machines. He was doing it from my apartment. He had been coming into my apartment, don't know how long, um, since the apartment was cheap, I was only paying 650 a month for it. Um, the cameras that were in the hallways didn't quite work. Um, it's hard to blame the, um, the dude who kind of managed the um, apartment building, the one who I really talked to the most because he was really friendly. He was very helpful anytime I kind of talked to him. And then when lockdown happened, he was very much on it about like, okay, payments are gonna be suspended or like paused for your guys' rent. We know what's, shit's going crazy. So I almost don't even wanna fault him, but when I think back to it, I'm like, you knew these cameras didn't work. And then I found out later, you knew this guy was a creep because it turns out I was not the only person who he had broken in, whose apartment they had broken into. The girl apparently who had lived there before me, some girl from Canada is what a neighbor eventually told me, um, had also, had her apartment broken into. So people are like, do you think he had a key? I do. I just think he had a key. I don't think the locks had been changed despite what the building manager said to the cops that night. Um, but yeah, uh, my neighbor did call the cops because she heard me screaming bloody murder. And in that moment, I was like, great, I'm about to be murdered. So the only thing I could think to do, cause my mace is by the door. I don't expect to have an intruder that I have to defend myself for. Um, thankfully, the man, when I screamed, turned tail and ran, never saw his face, just saw his silhouette, just saw his height. Um, and again, yeah, it eventually ended up being a neighbor of mine. I feel like I'm stumbling a little bit just because I'm, I'm kind of nervous about talking about this because, you know, having a stalker is not very fun. Eventually, it was about mid, late February when this happened. And since apparently this hadn't been the only incident with him, which I wasn't told by management, I was told by a neighbor. Um, he was eventually, um, by the end of the month, kicked out of the apartment complex. Um, I did steal a piece of his mail to figure out his name once because I was like, I bet you any amount of money, he's stealing my shit. My laundry's done, I'll get that in a minute. And I did look him up and I won't say um, what crimes he has committed, but boy, was I scared that I was gonna die in the um, two weeks before he was officially booted from the apartment complex. So, for two years, I slept with a knife. I carried this with me everywhere. I went everywhere with this thing. This very specific knife that I got. Um, I bought a bat. I got every type of, you know, personal protective thing you could get that's not like a gun or anything. Um, but slept with a knife for two years because of that. And what's funny is that that's not even one of the craziest things that happened. Well, that is the craziest thing that happened while I lived there. But March, everything shuts down, pandemic happens. Oh, and I never got my sock back. I never got any of my clothes back. I didn't want them back at this point. But the fact of the matter was he stole my sock, my favorite sock. If he had stolen both, maybe I wouldn't have remembered and maybe this wouldn't be such a big deal to me. But my favorite fucking sock, he only stole one of them. If you're gonna steal a sock to do uh, unmentionable items to, take both of them. Come on, fucking asshole. And if I'm sh fidgeting with this and flinging it around for the rest of the video, forgive me, but it, it's a comfort item for me now. You one would imagine why. Um, so eventually everything shuts down and I believe in April, um, I was slowly starting to, you know, calm down. Um, my stalker, fuck you, Brian, he had been booted. I was trying to, you know, get back to a sense of normalcy. I was tired of crying at work because again, I was still convinced that this guy like knew where I worked since he knew where I lived and he'd watched me slept God knows how many times. Um, so I was like, I might still be murdered, but like, you know what? We're not going down without a fight, but March happened, pandemic, everything shut down. Now, the job that I had actually kept me on because I had just been promoted to um, a manager. So thankfully I didn't get furloughed or else I would have been fucked and I would have had to move back to Maryland. Thank God that didn't happen. Um, but in April, 
I am um, sitting up, listening to music, talking to a friend on Instagram, and I hear a blood curdling scream. A scream not unlike what I assume I sounded like to my neighbors back when my stalker broke in and I caught him watching me sleep. So, I, being a freshly traumatized white girl, grab my jacket, grab my phone, grab my knife. And at first I'm, I'm tiptoeing around the hallways cause I'm like, there's no way that's a TV. That's, n there's no way this is a movie that someone's just blasting too loud. Something's happening. Eventually I walk past where the women's room is and I find the apartment. And this is the apartment of a girl. And I don't know how much I'm allowed to even talk about this because there was like a whole court case and everything. Eventually I find the room and I pretty much beat the door open. The door was already like ajar, but I fucking threw that thing in because all I heard was the sounds of a struggle and a girl crying for help. So long story short on that, because I don't want to get into all the traumatizing details. Um, I did almost kill a man that night, but he decided that the window was the wiser choice. And boy, was he fucking right. I, I, I'll just summarize it with the words. And it feels weird to say that I rescued my neighbor from being murdered, which is crazy. <laughs> A little crazy. And at that point, I remember that night talking to a couple of my neighbors and just telling them like, huh, this is kind of, this is, this is crazy. Like, I don't know if you heard me screaming the other time, but that was me. And that was a guy that just got evicted because he was stealing my clothes and he was watching me sleep. So this place is like cursed or something. And there was a moment where I was convinced that the man who had broken in and tried to kill my new neighbor was someone who could have potentially been my stalker. Um, I did tell this to the police who were called by many people, um, you know, to find the man, which they did find him eventually. And I don't know how long he has been locked up. I don't know if he's in jail for life. I don't know anything about it. They never eventually, they never actually summoned me to testify. I know nothing about it. I just know that she's alive and um, thank God. That's all I'll say. So we'll um, move on from that. I had a very anxious summer. Um, I was, doing better because you know when you're hit with traumatizing thing after traumatizing thing but in a really short period of time you kind of like have to muscle your way through you might not know this if you aren't someone who's really good at dealing with trauma but i am i'm so familiar with this neighborhood baby i used to live there so sometimes if i have to take a stroll through the streets and have a bad time about it i'm gonna be okay i know how to handle it shouldn't have to but i do and eventually the summer progressed somebody else moved into my uh, old stalker's new apartment who ended up being a guy that started slipping notes underneath my apartment door trying to befriend me and I think that was the moment where I realized huh I'm gonna have to keep this motherfucking thing on me for a while um he was ended up being harmless but boy did he um come to my door knocking one night uh couldn't speak quite literally stood there couldn't speak without um stuttering over his words because he wanted to hang out and I had to very kindly turn him down and thank god um I didn't open the door all the way because I had I was holding the back of the door with my knife like this just fucking ready to go and I'm not saying that every cheap apartment like this in LA is like this what I am saying is that of course there was a reason that $650 a month apartment was $650 a month and not just because there was no bathroom um inside of the unit or anything of the sort, kitchen. Um, but because of how there were so many chances and opportunities and almost accidents in which I could have been McMurdered or I wasn't. So if safety is not a priority and if you sleep with like a gun under your pillow, you'll be fine. Um, but also you get exactly what you pay for when you only spend $650 a month on rent. Do I regret doing it? Actually, no, I don't. I do not regret living there. Maybe that's because I'm an insane fucking white bitch from suburban Maryland who decided it's gonna be a risk going to LA anyway. Maybe that's the whole reason. But if I hadn't done it, I wouldn't, I mean, like if I hadn't gotten that apartment, I wouldn't have stayed in LA just because everything ended up working in my favor to keep me in LA trap me some people might say um and it was always by the skin of my teeth 
Like I could have been murdered that night with my soccer, but my scream scared me away. And I could have had a physical altercation with a man who was attempting to murder my um, neighbor, but uh, thankfully I scared him away. <laughs> I'm just so fucking scary, you know? Me, five foot six, this blonde bitch. Um, even though my hair doesn't look blonde right now. But anyways, my journey living in downtown Los Angeles was fairly uneventful from those few uncomfortable, we'll call them, situations onward. Um, there was an insane roach problem, which I've never experienced before in my life, an insane roach problem that prevented me from keeping food in my apartment and made me develop such weird paranoid rituals, even like trying to get to sleep, I'd fucking have to shake everything out. Oh, it was so disgusting. Um, I really have such low standards for the places where I live, which is why the place that I live now is like a fucking Mecca. But eventually I did get onto moving out, but that didn't happen in 2020. So 2020, since everything was shut down and the world was crazy and I was still working, but I couldn't get unemployment because of my like paperwork. Cause I just moved from Maryland. It was a whole thing. I stayed working the job that I had. Um, I made a lot of friends online actually in 2020 because some Discord servers opened up in some communities that I was in, Emo Night being one of them. And um, there was a Twilight Jasper and Alice Discord server that opened up, Jalus, that I, I jumped straight back into because you know me and my fan fictions. I was like, oh hell yeah, let's make some friends. So I made a whole bunch of friends tw in 2020. I dyed my hair a whole bunch of crazy colors. I was like pink and blonde and purple and blue and it was so fun. I did end up getting COVID um, Christmas 2020 at work, that sucked. And then by the new year, I was already planning like my 2021. I did want to move out at some point because by the time November 2020 had rolled around, I had already been in that apartment for a year, the downtown apartment. So yeah, in 2021, um, my fucking hands can't sit still in 2021 i started planning my little head shave um which was the thing that i have since done even though it doesn't look like it because my hair's quite long now it grows fast as shit someone's got a loud car all right oh and at some point between 2020 and 2021 i started getting botox i didn't get it like too often like i would my i would regain my forehead movement capabilities like in between um but that was a silly thing that I did. I would do it again in a heartbeat, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, I got like Botox and stuff. It was honestly dope. Again, I would have, if I could afford it, I would have Botox right now probably. But eventually I did shave my head in 2021. In 2021, um, I also started going out to events again. By events, I need emo night. Um, so I started attending emo nights again. Um, I had a lot of fun with my hair, bleached it, I was pink. Um, 2021, I went to Vegas with a bunch of friends with Emo Night, had a lot of fun, um, did a little bit of traveling here and there. I did go to San Francisco for the first time. Uh, I went to San Diego for the first time, so it was in different cities on either end of California. I love living in California, love living here in LA. Um, eventually I did at the end of 2021, um, decide to move here. And I decided to move here because I had just gotten a promotion. Um, so another promotion. So now I was like running the restaurant or helping my co-manager run a restaurant. And um, it was awful. Um, it was, the job itself was just long. Um, my team, I adored. I love the people that I worked with except for my co-manager who is actually the reason I did quit. And I'm pretty sure he knows that, but I mean, you were an asshole. That's all I'll say. Like, I won't say much other than that, but you know it. I'd like he's ever going to see this, but if he does, I, I don't care. Um, so let me think. December 2021, I moved here. Oh, oh, and at the end of the month, I quit. Um, I quit my job, which was such a experience to move into an apartment that was suddenly hundreds of dollars more expensive than the apartment that I had been living in in downtown Los Angeles. So I was like, hmm, that was a silly move. A new apartment with a new relationship that ended very shortly after. Um, new job, I'm a nanny now. I did DoorDash a lot at the beginning of the year and I kind of did it throughout the year. This is 2022 I'm talking about, um, right? Sorry, I'm getting distracted with my like own tra trail. Of my own trail of thought is distracting me. 
what do you think? So I was going into 2021 with a brand new apartment, which was so exciting. Um, and again, it's not that I hated it, but it's just that he stole many things from me. He stole my, my comfort, my ability to sleep without this knife, without having an anxiety attack. Um, he stole, you know, a few things from me, but nothing, and this sounds fucking crazy, hurts as much as the sock. He had, I had favorite bras disappear. Every single black bra I owned disappeared. But I want my fucking sock back. I don't even want it back. It's just the principle of taking in the first place. So when that story, the story of me living downtown in Los Angeles closed, a much more beautiful, stress-free story started. So DoorDash helped. I got a job as a nanny to a little boy who I still nanny to this day, and he is my bestest friend in the whole wide world, and I adore him. And, and in 2022, I also started a fun little podcast with my best friend. Um, I'll call her G, because I still don't know if I've said her name on this channel, but I'm gonna not say it, because I'm a good friend. Um, and we started that, it's a Twilight podcast, of course, so I would assume most of you don't give a shit about that. 2022 was a very good year for me. Um, financially, not at all. Um, emotionally and mentally, a great year. Um, I did eventually get my ADHD diagnosis, which like, listen, I, we've been new. We've been new, but it is nice to be um, back on meds again. Um, I have since the beginning of this year, so we'll go ahead and skip through 2022. Not a lot happened, I, except for podcasting stuff and me seeing more friends and hanging out with more people and being just a friendly presence when I make my once a month outings at Emo Nights and then I go back into my hidey hole and I'm on the internet every other moment of the day when I'm not working and stuff. So 2022, that's how it ended, I think. Oh, I wasn't, I did visit home again, but I visit home periodically, like once a year on average, I feel like is what we've come out to. Um, 2023, that is this year. I've been busy working. I've been busy doing podcast stuff. I'm still doing my silly little fanfic writing here and there. And I just um, started back at school again. I am going to be going to school for what I want to eventually be an double English marketing degree. Um, so I'm just at a community college now where I want to take all the English and marketing classes. So when I do transfer to a four year degree, I can get you know that funky little english degree with like maybe a marketing minor or if money isn't too much of an issue and i can handle it mentally i would love to get a double major but i'm baby steps you know i'm literally in two english classes right now baby steps but yeah from the point where you saw me last in that video and now my life has been kind of crazy the main reason I wanted to film this update video is one, obviously to update everybody uh, because I've been feeling the itch to sit in front of a camera and talk like a narcissistic little asshole. And I also want to get a little bit into book, YouTube, booktube, is that what they call it? I'm also reading. Now that I have my ADHD diagnosis, don't look too hard at this bookshelf because everything you're gonna see right here is all the Twilight books and that doesn't matter. But I'm getting back into reading. I'm having a fantastic time and I've been watching a lot of booktube things and I wanna do what they do. I wanna sit down and be a bitch about books and be nice about the books that I want other people to read. So since I want to start doing that, I figured I would also record this so I didn't just show up out of nowhere and be like, let me tell you about the Locked Doom series. So yeah, that's why I'm here. And I've been putting off this video for so long. And I think it's because when I think about where I was three years ago to where I am now, it is, I think, the biggest difference in me as a person. How do I, how do I phrase this? It's the smallest amount of time in which the biggest changes ha have happened for me. And um, a lot of the times they've been super difficult and really hard because now that I'm out here, I've been forced to, you know, make my own friends and like have and build a support system that's with me, not just because of proximity, like family and like other friends that live nearby. So it's been very challenging at times. It's been very difficult, but it's been, again, a journey that I'm so grateful for. 
Um, I'm so glad I didn't get Mick murdered at that apartment. That would have been so embarrassing, especially if like friends and family had to come and get my shit and see all the like roach shit, like roach traps and shit. Like that would have sucked. I would have been so embarrassed, posthumously embarrassed forever. But overall, I feel like the reason that I have been putting off this video is because I knew when I made this video, it would mean something. I don't really know what. Um, and when I sat down to film this video, I didn't make this decision consciously, but I feel like I kind of knew that it would mean that I would finally get rid of this. This has been living in my desk because I have an apartment big enough to have a desk now. It's been living in my desk and it's been like this weird reminder. And I have this habit where it comes to like my past issues and trauma and stuff, not to get even more fucking depressing as I'm about to get a little misty eyed, where I love to metaphorically push my own bruises. And I don't know why I do this. And it's something that I want to make, I want to stop doing it. So I think me filming this video is me promising myself to stop pushing the bruises, you know? Um, because why do I need this? I don't need this. I refer to myself as an emotional hoarder, a sentimental hoarder is I think the term that I usually use. I don't want to hold on to the sentiment of this. This is, I don't need this anymore. It's one sock that has just been the bruise I've been pushing for the past three years now. Um, so I am actually going to throw this away. I don't know why that was so hard. Oh my God. And I know, I feel like this channel has been all about me reinventing myself every few years when I remember that it exists, um, which I think is just so funny that now that I'm back and I'm in my 30s now, I'm like, no, no, no. This bitch is intellectual. Booktube is where I belong. Um, but I also enjoy and adore having this channel because I get to kind of look back and see the dumb shit I've been into and like the obnoxious cringe stuff because let ye without cringe throw the first stone, am I right? Um, so I enjoy having this channel um, and I don't really want to like close the door on it and stop using it because I mean, I am someone who can look back on the shit that I've done and still find joy in like the silliest things, including the downtown apartment door. I can still look back at that and be like, oh, sweet summer child, you got no clue what's coming your way. And still kind of laugh at silly stuff like that. Um, but I want to kind of be able to still have this and move on with it. So um, to wrap this video up, if you have questions, more questions about the apartment, the last apartment, not this one. This one kicks ass. This one rocks. I have a roommate that lives in the front of the house. I live in the back of the house. We're on separate leases, a huge kitchen in the middle with like laundry and stuff. It's amazing. I have my own bathroom. It's so my own bathroom, chef's kiss. Um, so if you have any questions about like the old apartment, you can feel free to ask. I have clearly no problem talking about it. I'm sitting here rambling for this clip right now. It's 40 minutes and God, I hope it, I don't want to record a video that's so long. So I'm hoping that I can cut it down to at least like 25. But um, I don't know. I don't even know how to end this video because I wasn't planning on sitting down and getting actually emotional. It was supposed to be like, um, let me fill you in on the journey that I've had the last three years, but I should just fucking know myself better by now. I'll never learn. But um, what a way to announce that I'm gonna be uploading videos every so often, am I right? Um, that's it. I don't know why you're subscribed to me if you are, and if you're watching this and you decide, boy, I should subscribe, you can reconsider if you'd like, but don't anticipate anything interesting. Um, or, and also don't hope that anything else interesting like my 2020 happens again, or I will be so fucking mad. <laughs> um, yeah, 
I don't know what else to say. Oh, I did get on Curology, which is why I just put on a little bit of um that on my face. Yeah, it's been, well, it'll be three years this summer since I've been on Curology, so that shit fucking works. I'm pissed off about it even still, but I don't know what else to update you on. I read books now. I'm going to start doing booktube videos. I, I haven't been murdered. Ha ha. ADHD. You damn right. I'm on meds. Um, I don't know what else to say. So until next time. Bye. I don't know.